So today we're going to talk about why is that men love women who don't need them. Now, we're not talking about needing them in terms of financially, nothing like that, right? We're talking about the emotional um, distance. Because unfortunately, men, if they notice that you don't need them financially, there's a certain level of ego pain that's not that doesn't help you. In other words, when a man knows that a woman earns more or, and a woman is more socially um, powerful than they are and completely independent, it tends to turn men off. So it's a little different. So we're not referring to not needing them um, financially. It's important for a man to feel like you have some financial dependence on them. Um, not for manipulation, Just it's just the way that men are wired. Now, there are some men that want you to need them financially for manipulation purposes. But evolutionarily speaking, men feel needed when you need them financially. That's just a fact, okay? So we're going to talk about why is it psychologically that men tend to um, fall in love with women who don't need them. Now, you don't, the thing is this, is that the reason why you don't, you want to communicate that you don't need them, primarily, you got to let them know that you don't need commitment too fast. And don't forget, people, um, support Father Alex during the holidays by checking out his courses. We're having 50% off all of my courses. So if you have a granny and she wants to be more charismatic, um, or a grandpa and, she, and he wants to be more charismatic, well, you could purchase Granny, the course Charisma Blueprint, right? Or let's just say Granny is having a tough time with dealing with the inevitable and you want her to be happier. Well, you could use that coupon code, Mindful, to get 50% off all of my courses, especially Emotional Mastery, right? And maybe we could get Granny to feel a lot better about our life situation. Um, you can click on the description down below to purchase it. And it's not just that we also are, all of our previous courses, you can use those coupon codes for that. Um, and let's just say Granny wants to talk to me on the phone because she feels like talking to me will help her. Well, you could purchase Granny a one-on-one -on -one session with Father Alex online using the coupon code MINDFUL, okay? It's important to let people know that you're not desperate for commitment. It's important to let people know that you're not desperate for sex, none of that kind of stuff, right? Um, so the reason why you want to do this is because when you get into know people, you don't really know the person, all right? And a lot of the times, people date with their hearts. People date with their limbic, limbic, limbic system. They only go after people who, who create a, a bigger neurochemical party in your mind, right? But the problem is that if you go off of the chemistry, if you go off of how they look, you're going to you're gonna look past their character and you're going to create a halo effect where you stop seeing the person for who they are. The problem is this, is that a lot of the times when we feel chemistry and we like the person, we feel like we know their true character. The problem is that that's just their personality or their public representative. You don't really know their character. Their character is deeper and their character is shown to you over time and under certain circumstances. And unfortunately, you don't want to get to know this person once you commit to them because then it's already too late. You're already in love with them. You know, you know what I'm saying? And the thing is, is that emotions are cloudy. You have to remain skeptical when you first get to know them. By you remaining skeptical, not in term, not please don't do this if you're naturally skeptical of people. First of all, don't do this. Most people are not are not skeptical. Most people go off of appearances. Okay, if you if you're someone that always questions everyone, this is not the video for you. Okay, I put the put put the computer down, Terminator, and watch another video because this is not the video for you. But most people, when they're falling in love with people, they are certain about the, who this person is. They are certain about their personality and their character when they're in love. You got to, when you first meet people, remind yourself that you don't know them. They'll want to give you, because what people want to do is they want to tell you that the fantasy that, they're, that you're seeing, the, experiencing, the experience that you're feeling right now is reality right? They don't want you to look deeper about their character. They want you to buy into the fantasy and the myth that they're creating about themselves. You want to maintain mental independence and continually pull, continually be skeptical until you commit to them. Continually look for evidence, look for evidence that goes against the personality that they're showing you and look for opposing negative traits about them, especially if you feel intent, deep, chemistry with this person 
because the more deep chemistry you feel, the more biased you are and the more susceptible you are to getting manipulated, to getting played, to completely having a, a really negative experience with this person. So, so that's why a lot of the times people who don't need who don't who don't need you create that feeling because a lot of the times you feel like they're not looking at a fantasy you feel like they're looking at just reality straight on and and being in love is very similar to when you're on drugs right if you're the if you're the only one on drugs you feel a little weird you want everyone to join in right and so you'd be like hey you want you want some of this crack come on man everyone is in it try this crack try this crack right you know and i remember when i would go to raves and i i did molly during that time um i would i would i wanted i wanted to hang out with people who were also rolling to be honest with you right um and so it's it's, it's kind of very similar to that where you want people to be on your level so when you know that this person doesn't feel that same chemistry you sort of want them to join in and you don't feel that they also feel that chemistry. So you want, so, so as a result, it makes you want them, it makes you want um, to, to seduce them. It makes you to get them to fall for you, if that makes any sense. So how do you do this? First of all, don't commit your affections, right? Don't let them know that they're the only one. The biggest mistakes that people make when, when they're trying to apply this, this strategy is that their insecurities, even, even if you're seeing other people, you'll, you'll hide the fact that you're seeing other people because you feel like that pushes pe people away. That's quite the contrary, right? You don't commit your affections to people and stay aloof. Even, even act like you don't even know how much you, they like you. You might know that they really like you. Stay aloof about the fact. You know, just say, oh my God, I cannot believe you gave me that gift. And what that does is that they'll say to themselves, this fucking idiot. What else am I supposed to do to show this guy or this girl that I like them, right? And so that frustration makes them work harder. <laughs> it is the fool who always rushes to take sides. Do not commit to any side or cause but yourself. By maintaining your independence, you become the master of others, playing people against one another, making them pursue you. Oh my God, I, I, you know, I like you, but I didn't know, you know, you really liked me this much. The aloofness frustrates people, you know? It's almost like, I remember when I was younger, there was this girl who was into me and I didn't know she liked me. And she would get, she, now she wouldn't give me gifts, but you could tell by the psycho smile she would give me, um, by, by the way that she reacted to me compared to the way she reacted to other people. But I remember I stayed aloof, not because I was playing a strategy, but because I was I was I was a dumbass people. And so this girl, I remember she would go above and beyond to try to seduce me. But I was so dumb mentally simply because I was insecure. I didn't know she liked me. You know, I didn't know that a girl like her would like me at that time. So I was aloof. But I remember people telling me that this girl is obsessed with you. But I, I just couldn't see it. I couldn't see it because I just couldn't believe this girl liked me. You know what I'm saying? So eventually, over time, she got frustrated, and I and I went too far, and she just ended up going after another guy, another friend of mine, <laughs> right? But the aloofness, the the I'm aware that thank you for doing this nice thing, but I'm not aware that you like me. Is makes people show you that they like you because they think okay, the reason why he's not chasing me back, the reason why in her case, she thought it wasn't because I didn't like her. The truth is I didn't like her that much, but in her mind, she'll say, oh, it's because he doesn't know I like him. So the aloofness makes this person chase more, makes this person's um, chasing actions more obvious. And they, and they expose their cars a lot sooner, which is to your benefit, right? Um, and the key is that the aloofness frustrates them. They're like, God damn, how dense are you, Delexis? I fucking like you. Like, God damn, give me that dick. <laughs> I'm kidding, she didn't say that, right? Um, so that's one thing. So what you want to do, the, the mistake that I did is that I didn't give this woman hope. Now, again, I didn't know she liked me, but if in hindsight, to keep her interested, I should have just given her hope. Just say, oh, I was like, hey, Rachel, um, thank you. I really appreciate it. You're awesome. You know, But recognizing that she likes me and giving her some hope and say, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You're really special to me. That type of shit, right? <laughs> right? The giving of the giving of the hope. Which you pretty much can do by just not saying no to them. <laughs> and this is what people do when they don't like us. And this is really frustrating. 
especially when we don't have the backbone to tell them that we don't like them back. What that does is that it makes them obsessed with us. But when you don't give people a clear no, and you're saying, I don't know, not yeah, I got to think about it. Maybe I really like you. Let me let get to know you more. That tends to put people in a prison of hope. And it's, it's cruel if you have no intentions of actually doing anything with them. But it does bring you power. Making people wait for you, making a, a host of people wait for your decision is a source of power. Don't look at me like that, people. The, the hell? Like, it's just she managed to combine these goals by dangling the possibility of marriage in order to forge alliances. The moment she committed to any single suitor would have been the moment she lost her power. Mm -hmm. She had to emanate mystery and desirability, never discouraging anyone's hopes, but never yielding. Th this is why saying no outright is not good, even though it's really annoying. When you give people a no, you give them answer, you give them clarity, they're able to leave you. And they're able to leave in peace. But when you don't give them a clear answer, what that does is that it frustrates them, but it also makes them chase even harder because what they want is clarity from you and what you're giving them is more confusion. But this frustration also comes with a sense of competition and their self-esteem is also attached to it. So they take it personal and what, they, what it causes them to do is chase harder. Um, now, there's some bit of resentment behind that chasing, right? Because they're in their minds, they're like, this this person is making me, like, why can't this person just tell me they don't like me? You know, but at the same time, by you not saying no, because that's what most people do when 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 they're acting, when, they're, when they feel this way about us, it makes us chase even harder. Or even for some women, for example, with guys, some guys just one smile gives a guy hope. I mean, we're hopeless creatures, people, where one smile makes our, makes our day right um so that's one thing give them hope but don't give them complete satisfaction so that can be one little kiss for example at the end of the day make them the, the whole time for example i've been with women where it feels like she I'm, she's not into the date i'm like god damn like this is man i should have just stayed home today and then at the end of the day she comes in and kisses me and i'm like oh my god all right that's fucking cool right so now the next time i see her i know that she's she acts cold but when it comes down to it, she's really into me. So the aloofness of her, even though I know she likes me, but I'm still seeing a certain level of aloofness that just by pure, just by the mere presence of it makes, it, makes me feel insecure, you know? But because she did a, the complete opposite at the end of the day by kissing me, now I'm like, I'm in a state of aloofness, but hope. And that creates a spark, a chemistry, right? So if they ask you if you're, if you're seeing other people, Never say no. Always say that you're seeing other people. Why? Because competition is infectious, right? When people know that other people are after you, like I said, humans are, are naturally competitive. Um, desire is an imitative process. If they see other people desiring you, they're going to want to desire you as well. So how do you seem... So the key to all of this is to seem ungraspable, right? At least in the beginning. Because when we like someone, our insecurities take hold of us. And so we over pursue someone to the point where we just start pushing them away. So to seem ungraspable is to create an aura of power around you. So hold yourself back and don't succumb to the temptation to give in to them. For example, um, I remember I was watching this movie. Um, what's it called? Um, something the sea the color of the sea is blue some lesbian movie i don't know anyway so the main lesbian chick knows that there is this lesbian chick she's 17 years old it's a fucking french movie man what do you expect sorry if you were french people but i'm just saying um this this 20 something year old girl is is noticing that there is a 17 year old girl that's really into her right and what this the older woman she knows that she's into her but she doesn't make a move she invites her to hang out they get really close. She's about to kiss her and she knows she wants to be kissed, but she doesn't do nothing and walks away. But then she looks back, right? She does this on multiple dates where she gets close and then leaves, right? But the, the eye contact, it, mind you, ignore the fact the age is fucking crazy, people. But the eye contact, the, 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 the restraint that the top, that the main lesbian has makes the other younger 
lesbian chase her more. Now, what happens is that the opposite is is because that that girl, the the younger one, she went to a bar, and every woman was on top of her. Every woman was trying to kiss her. Every woman was trying to flirt with her. But the main chick, the the really hot one, the the older lesbian, she didn't even hit on her in fact that night she didn't even get her number she just left she talked to her had a friendly casual conversation she knew she was into her right because of the way she was be the younger girl one was looking at her but she restrained herself and so that restraint put the younger one she, it re she reversed the table and now she was chasing because every woman was chasing and in fact if she would have chased the, the the younger one she would have seemed like an aggressive lesbian like all the other ones but she stood out by keeping the distance being friendly but not making by not but not making the move of being physical she let the onus of physicality be on the other girl and that's what happened she ended up just going after her and kissing her and she became obsessed so obsessed that she wanted a relationship with her right but because she sensed that the top lesbian kept a physical dis an emotional distance it frustrated her but that she that she couldn't commit right and so the main the, the younger lesbian long story short she ended up cheating on her you know because she wanted to experiment men <laughs> patriarchy right <laughs> and the main lesbian ended, ended up finding out what happened she was completely unforgiving kicked her the fuck out she kicked her out no no heart she just kicked out she begged to not be kicked out but she just she just said get the fuck out of my house i don't want you no more you went out with a guy and while that was happening i was cheering i was like yeah team man let's fucking go and the girl that i was with she was like you're fucking toxic how dare you root for the destruction of a relationship <laughs> right but that was a perfect example of that concept right um she by her holding herself back and not making a move and letting and getting to that and inching to make a move but always pulling back put that woman put that girl well at that point she was 18 put her in a in a, a in fever pitch where she ended up making a move when when in reality every other woman would have made a move on her right so that's one thing that's why people who have boyfriend and girlfriends right that's why they're so attractive because like i said they especially the faithful ones are more attractive because they're they're hard to budge you can't so or even gay guys <laughs> that's the ultimate kryptonite for a woman right so everyone would try so what would happen is that by you maintaining your distance but first of all you got to show people that you're willing to commit okay so you can't do this and 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 make give people the impression that you can't commit because you have a shitty attachment style because then they still they won't blame themselves right you gotta understand is that when they think that you're that you're able to commit but you can't commit to them they take it personal right but when they know that you're flawed and that you have some type of like code negative attachment style well they don't take it as personal and their minds doesn't find a way to to fix it because since it's your problem then that means i can't fix it but since you commit to everyone but me, then that means I'm not trying hard enough, right? So that's that's the way that they ra back rationalize. So you'll be more desired by not succumbing to the desires for you to commit. And that's the thing is that when you rush to commitment, especially the first person that you meet, what that gives signals of is signs of weakness. You can't be doing that. You got to let people come to you instead and let them commit to you rather than um, and convince you to commit to them don't take the first person that wants a commitment don't accept the first sign of commitment wait a little bit longer and wait five minutes extra wait another day another week because what that does is that it just gives you more power it just gives makes you look more attractive and once they have you they'll appreciate you more because everyone will try then to make you commit by giving you gifts favors right and doing things for you and going out of the way for you and what you got to do is accept them right let everyone court you let every and, and make sure everyone knows that you're being courted but just maintain yourself maintain aloofness don't say i know i'm manipulating them that's fucked up right what what what, what you got to do is act like nothing is happening you don't know what's going on you just say i thought they were just being friendly you know you know how women act like oh i, I don't know like i know i have humongous titties and i have a beautiful face but people are just nice to me because of my personality 
Bitch, please. Look at them titties, man. They got their own person. All right. Let me just... <laughs> right? Um, everyone will try to make you to commit. Just maintain your inner aloofness. Don't seem like you can't commit. Eventually, commit so that you don't seem like you're incapable of commitment or have some history of commitment. Just make sure that people don't think that you're, you're incapable because you have some negative attachment style, right? Um, now, in order for you to do this, you have to be self-resilient. You have to, because if you're emotionally weak, you're going to give in to the first person that offers you commitment. And that looks weak. And most of the time, it's, the bad, it's not a good decision. It's better to weigh your options and wait a while and let others court you and let others impress you so that then you can make a decision. So how do you do this? Well, don't depend on others to get things done. In other words, to get that validation, learn to self-validate yourself through developing a meditation practice, people. That's the best way to do that. Learn to have confidence in yourself by overestimating yourself more than usual, right? Overestimate how much you can handle pain. Overestimate how much you can wait. Overestimate how happy you'll be without them. You, why? Because expectation, happiness is a function of expectation and also willpower and your ability to handle pain is also a function of your expectations. If you expect and expect yourself to handle loss, to handle being able to be alone and go at it with a positive attitude rather than from a fearful place and saying, oh my God, I'm going to be alone, then that thought that I'm going to be alone will naturally gravitate towards you committing too soon and for you to pop the bubble of tension that you eventually create through applying these strategies. Keys to power. When you hold yourself back, you incur not anger, but a kind of respect. You instantly seem powerful because you make yourself ungraspable mm -hmm. rather than succumbing to the group or to the relationship, mm -hmm. as most people do. This aura of power only grows with time. As your reputation for independence grows, more and more people will come to desire you. Yeah, people are always trying to monopolize what's, what's hard to grasp, what's, what's hard to get. Like Dragon Balls or even collectibles. There's a reason why people like rare stuff. There's a reason why people like to claim things that are unclaimed. Um, so you're, you're giving them that challenge. And this is just a state of mind. You have, to, you, have to, you have to understand that this is what people want. And, 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 and turn your gaze outward and stop thinking of yourself and start thinking, what type of experience do people want? And what people want is something that's ungraspable. Something that everyone tried, but they couldn't get. Give them that illusion. Give them that satisfaction. That's how you seduce people. That's how you make them feel special. Make them, make them feel like they were the ones that were finally able to win you over. But not with their money, but with their charm. And you, and you give them that challenge through flirting, flirting, and not, making, and not completely committing to them. And that will make them, because like I said, this creates insecurities and that's true. But also what this does is that romanticism is what creates insecurity. It, it, I mean, insecurity is what creates romanticism. Chasing is what creates romance, is what creates, um, no, <laughs> insecurity is what makes people chase. You can't have both. You know what I'm saying? Wanting to be the one who gets you to commit. Desire is like a virus. If we see that someone is desired by other people, we tend to find this person desirable too. The moment you commit, the magic is gone. You become like everyone else. People will try all kinds of underhanded methods to get you to commit. Mm -hmm. They will give you gifts, shower you with favors, all to put you under obligation. Encourage the attention, stimulate their interest, but do not commit. At Encourage the attention, stimulate their interest, mm -hmm. but do not commit at any cost. Accept the gifts and favors if you so desire, but be careful to maintain your inner aloofness. Just like because what that does, the aloofness will allow you to, to almost seem like the, the innocent bystander, you know? Your awareness of what's going on would, will, will put the other person on the defensive and they'll resent you for it. 
That's just how that works. It's, you don't want people to resent you. You want to be able to have some form of ignorance as to as to the moves that everyone is making around you so that then they, they can freely chase, freely express how they feel about you without feeling any sort of control on your part, if that makes any sense. This is the evilest video I've done in years, to be honest with you. So that's how you do it. That's how you seem ungraspable. And this is why people love those who don't need them. Because what you're doing is that by you not committing to them, you're telling them, I don't need you. People love to feel needed. That's one thing about people. And another thing about people is that people love people who don't feel like they are, they need you. Because what that says is that you are important. What that says is that you are useful and resourceful. Right. And people want those types of people in their lives because everyone at one point wants distance. Everyone, even even when they're with you, there's a certain level of wanting their own space that you feel like you can't have when you sense that the person that you're with is suffocating you and you tend to resent that and that tends to push you away from them. By you showing them that you're not too eager to commit, you're able to give people that ability to feel intimate with you while having that freedom to not feel that natural suffocation that most people bring in as a Trojan horse with the love that they provide, right? Um, and what that does is that people want those traits in their kids. People want kids who are independent and can be by themselves and that could survive on their own, right? And so when they sense that you cannot be by yourself, that you are not independent, it's an unconscious desire to not want to have kids who are needy as fuck. Right? I don't want those shitty genes. I want those independent genes from that person. And that's you, that's how you communicate that. Um, and, and, and look, for me, at least for me in my experience, um, like there is a certain level of flattery when a woman commits soon to me. But usually when a woman commits so soon to me and I'm flattered by it, a lot of times my self-esteem is a little bit lower in that moment. And I am not saying that accepting people who really want a relationship really fast with you is bad. It really isn't, right? But it's optimal to go after those who who take their time with their commitment. It's just it's just more optimal. And you want to play those numbers a little like that because usually people who commit fast are making emotional decisions. There's usually bigger problems underneath that. And I'm not judging people who who want commitment fast, I'm not. But I'm just saying in general, there's usually something underneath that that's pushing you towards wanting quick commitment. It's just how that works, people. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys ever want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, go to mindfulattraction.org. Don't forget, we're having 50% off all of our courses using the coupon code MINDFUL. And we're having 20% off my coaching calls using the coupon code MINDFUL, okay? Anyways, take care, and I hope you guys enjoyed.